Welcome Destiny Church. It's wonderful to be together. Please comment and let us know that you're here. We believe that we're here to be part of taking ordinary people and turning them into fearless disciples of Jesus who influence our society. We're all about Jesus. If you're new with us, we want you to know his love and his goodness. Please reach out to us through our WhatsApp community. We'd love to be on this journey with you. We had a great time on Easter Friday. And before that, we had a wonderful prayer meeting. 57 people joined us online. I want to say thank you to all of you who joined us online, to every one of you who shared prayer requests. And our pastors and our elders have been praying for those requests specifically and by name. We prayed for 15 business people and you should have received a a text message from me personally letting you know that I prayed for you during that time. If you're a business person and you'd like us to pray with you, um, please reach out to us on our WhatsApp line. We also have 12 people in the church who are medical people, nurses, doctors, surgeons, things like that. And we're really praying for them at this time and for their organizations. And if you're online today, we love you and God is with you and you're just amazing heroes at this time. And uh, I'm part of a group of pastors that sends an encouraging video to those people every day. And so you get a, a different video from a different pastor every day of the week to keep your faith filled up during this time. Please, if you'd like to be part of that community, again, WhatsApp us and let us know that you're part of the medical fraternity. And we'd love to send that to you. Please stay connected during this time. It's so important for us to do that. And uh, we have some great resources for your children. The curriculum that we have been using when we were gathering in our building is now available free online and it's wonderful. So for every age group of children, you can prep a video that lasts anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes for your children. It includes worship, a time of, of Bible message, and an interactive activity, and you can invest in your children's faith. We'd love to partner with you that way. And please see all of the links on our channels and at the bottom of these videos. Well. We're about to hear a fantastic message from Donovan Kutsia, who is the leader of our national group of churches, the Assemblies of God. Enjoy the message. Welcome once again to another pre-recorded sermon. Easter, what a wonderful time. Easter speaks of life, new life, of resurrection. Today we're going to look at Psalm 24, which speaks of the crown. And so far we've looked at Psalm 22, the cross, Psalm 23, the crook of the shepherd. And Psalm 24, the crown of the king. So let's uh, look together at Psalm 24. Let's read it together. It says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up your ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, your ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. So Psalm 24 deals with the King. Now Jesus is the King. Again, these are prophetic Psalms, part of a trilogy, as I've said before. And Psalm 24 is prophetic and speaks of Jesus the King. Why is Jesus described as this great King that the ancient doors and gates have to lift their heads up for and let in? Well, number one, Jesus is King because of his resurrection. Number two, Jesus is king because of his reign. And number three, Jesus is king because of his return. So the resurrection deals with the past. He has been raised from the dead, therefore he is king. He is reigning in heaven right now, present. He is reigning now at the right hand of the majesty. And thirdly, he will return in the future. This makes Jesus King of Kings. This makes Jesus Lord of Lords. This makes Jesus 
different to any other king that has ever lived. So number one, then Jesus is king because of the resurrection. Revelation 1, 5 to 6 says, Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of all the kings of the earth. Now I want you to notice the sequence there. He is the faithful witness. The, the Greek word there is martis, which means martyr. Jesus is the faithful witness who stood before Pontius Pilate, who refused to back down, who said he is who he is, and as a result of that, he died. So he is the faithful witness, he died. Therefore, he is the firstborn from the dead, it moves on, and therefore the ruler of all the kings of the earth. No other king has been raised from the dead. Jesus did not come back from the death from dead, like Lazarus did. Lazarus came back from the dead and died again. Jesus is resurrected from the dead, never to die again. And this makes him a unique king, and he's king because of the resurrection. Matthew writes thus in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 5 to 6. But the angel answered and said to the woman, that's when she comes to the tomb and Jesus is not there. And she's all freaked out. And the angel says, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Jesus was raised from the dead. What a powerful thing. He was brought back from death. Romans 6 verse 9. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead. He will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. I said it before. I'll say it again here. You see, what we need to understand here is Lazarus died, like a few others in the Bible, and they were brought back from the dead to life, only to die again. Jesus wasn't just brought back to life. He conquered death. Death had to let go of him. Death could not hold on to him. Why? Because he was not guilty. I remember listening years ago to a guy called Mike Wonky, who was a Christian comedian. And he tells the story about Jesus dying on the cross. And he says, after Jesus had died on the cross, the devil came to his two lieutenants, death and corruption. And he said, now listen, death, I've got him there. I've got him on the cross. Now death... I want you to kill him, and then corruption, I want you to corrupt him. Mission accomplished, I can go on a three-day holiday. After three days, the devil comes back, and all hell is broken loose. The lights are on in hell. Prison doors are open. Prisoners have been set free. And the devil says, what's going on here? They say, what do you mean, what's going on here? This guy, Jesus, that you told us to bring down here, he has set everyone free. He said, hey, corruption, I thought I told you to corrupt him. He said, how do you expect me to corrupt him when death was unable to hold him? Death and corruption have been defeated. Jesus has broken their power. Resurrection life isn't just coming back to life. Resurrection life is eternal life. Goes on forever and has a quality that cannot be touched by sin or sickness or disease or death. That's why Jesus is king. He is completely different. Secondly, Jesus is king because of his reign now in heaven. That's where he is right now. He's reigning from heaven. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. After Jesus came, after Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure of this. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus reigns in heaven now. That's why the church is unstoppable and unconquerable. He reigns. That makes him a king. He has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. No other king has this authority. And he has this authority because he's been raised from the dead. He now is able to reign at the right hand of the majesty on high. Paul writes to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 27, and he says, after that the end will come, when he will turn the kingdom of God, kingdom over to God the Father, having destroyed every ruler and authority and power, for Christ must reign until he humbles all his enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death, for the scripture says God has put all things under his authority. So when you and I, who are in Christ, we die, we don't die, our bodies go to the grave, but our spirits go to our God in heaven. We cannot die. We have eternal life because our king reigns 
who has conquered death, sin, and hell. Jesus reigns right now. People may say, but look what's going on in the world. What about this coronavirus? Irrespective, irrespective of what happens to you and to me as a result of this virus or any other thing that may befall us, we know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That is the promise given to us. We have eternal life, not just everlasting life that goes on forever, eternal life that goes on forever and that has a quality about it that this world cannot give to us. And Jesus is our king because he reigns, we're in his kingdom and we experience his reign now. Thirdly, Jesus is king because of his return one day in the future. I love this portion in 1 Thessalonians. Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica and chapter 4, 15 to 18, and he says, we tell you this directly from the Lord. I love that. Paul's going, I didn't make this up. This is what God told me. I'm telling you this directly from the Lord. He says, we who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth, will be caught up in the clouds to be, meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Jesus is coming back again. I said it before. Arnold Schwarzenegger isn't the first to say, I'll be back. Jesus is the first to say, I'll be back. And he will be back. He will return. He promised he wouldn't. Why will he come back? And he tells us why. To receive his own. We're not, whether we live or whether we die, he's coming to fetch us. The dead will rise first. Then we who are alive will be changed in the twinkling of an eye to be with the Lord forever. He's coming to fetch us. He's coming to take us where he is. You saw already in the sermon, Psalm 23, that in his father's house are many mansions. He's preparing one for us. It's right there. It's got our name written on the door. It's waiting for us. He's coming to fetch us, to take us home, to be with him forever. This earth is not our home. We have a home in heaven. He's coming to fetch us. Secondly, Jesus is not only returning to receive us to himself, to come and fetch us for himself. Revelation 19, 11 to 13 says, then I saw heaven opened, and a white horse was standing there. John, in the book of Revelation, describes this. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire. On his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the Word of God. The armies of heaven dressed in the finest of pure white linen followed him on white horses. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press. On his robe, at his thigh, was written the title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. And the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast, miracles that deceived all who had accepted the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. Both the beast and his false prophet were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Jesus is not only coming to receive us, he's also coming to defeat his enemies. His enemies are those who try to frustrate the purposes of God. His enemies are those who are opposed to what God wants and the kingdom of God upon the earth. And the Bible tells us that there will be this massive day when he will come with a robe that is dipped in blood. His name is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, faithful and true, with a word coming out of his mouth like a sword, and he will defeat our enemies forever. So Jesus is coming to defeat our enemies and the enemies of God. Thirdly, He's coming for another reason. He is king, and in his return, Matthew tells us this is what will take place. Matthew 25, 31 to 33. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep at his right 
hand and the goats at his left. You know, Jesus is coming to judge the world. He's coming to receive his own. He's coming to defeat his enemies. And he's coming to divide the human race. There's going to be a judgment day. There has to be a judgment day. There's going to be a judgment day that will separate the sheep from the goats. Now's the opportunity to make this shepherd who laid down his life in Psalm 22, this shepherd who leads us in Psalm 23, return for us as the king shepherd in Psalm 24. Now is the time. Today, the Bible says, while it is called today, is the opportunity that you and I have to surrender and make Jesus Christ Lord of Lords and King of Kings so that when he divides the human race, we will be amongst the sheep and not amongst the goats. Now, not only is he coming to do that, but he's also coming to reward his people. Revelation 22, verses 12 to 13 says, Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So Jesus is coming to reward us. What a fantastic thing. And when he comes to reward us, he doesn't come to reward us just to get us into heaven. There are two, there are two judgments. There's the Bema Seat judgment and the Great White Throne judgment. The, one, the first judgment is to decide whether we go to heaven or not. The other judgment is to decide whether we get rewards or what rewards we will get. The second judgment is only for those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And one day, every one of us will stand before Jesus and everything that we've done the way that we've lived. He will have noticed it, it will have been recorded, and Jesus will reward us for the things that we have done. It scares me a little, to be honest. Uh, you know, people see you and me as this, people think I'm this big deal, or that big deal, or you this big deal. But ultimately, all things are laid bare before him to whom we have to give an account, the book of Hebrews says. So one day we'll stand before Jesus, nothing to hide. He will see us with eyes, the book of Revelation describes, with eyes like flames of fire. And you know what? That which is not worthy to enter heaven will just be burnt up in a flash, wood, hay, and stubble, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians. And the gold, precious stones, and silver will be able to withstand the heat of his fiery eyes. And when it is able to do that, we will be rewarded for what we have done. So we thank God that we've got a great shepherd who laid down his life. We've got a chief shepherd who equips us in this life. We don't do it on our own. And we have a great shepherd who's coming to reward us one day to receive our crowns. What a wonderful day that will be when we receive our crown from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We used to sing a little song in Sunday school in those days, when he cometh, when he cometh, to get, gather us all together. And his jewels, precious jewels, he loved and he's a Every one of us will see the crown that God has determined is appropriate for us. And so it's not living our lives simply before other people, but living our lives before Him. May God bless us, help us, encourage us, and let us believe what the Bible says about Him equipping us. And so I'm going to quote Hebrews 13, which is the chief shepherd. And now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant, brought back from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep, Equip us with everything which is good for doing His will. And may He work in us that which is pleasing to Him through Jesus Christ, His Son. Amen. God bless you. Take care. Wasn't that a wonderful message? Jesus reigns supreme in every way. And I was thinking about this message in light of what we've been through this, this weekend. We had Passover on Thursday night. And we were waiting in our homes and together as a church we were praying. And then we heard an announcement that the lockdown is extended. And we came together on Friday morning to remember the crucifixion of Jesus. And today we gathered on Resurrection Sunday when Jesus was raised from the dead. But between Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday is Holy Saturday. And on Holy Saturday the disciples didn't know that Jesus was raised from the dead. It looked like their hope of deliverance was dashed. Jesus' body was dead, lying in the grave, and it was the Sabbath, 
And so they were forbidden from going outside of their houses just like us. And literally all they could do was to sit and to wait for the hope of God to visit them. It was a very humbling experience. And I brought this clock with me today. Indeed, our whole country of Africa is really sitting and waiting on God. And I want to encourage you to be faithful and to wait with hope and to wait with joy in light of the resurrection of Jesus. Our dependence entirely is on God's power and on God's goodness and on God's eternal kingship through the resurrection of Jesus. One of the ways that you can do that practically is to read the scripture every day. And I want to show you how to do that on an amazing app called the Version. We've produced a tutorial for you to show you how to use that app and how to do a Bible reading plan. The people in my connect group and I, we are reading the scripture together every day and we discuss it using this app, which is so encouraging and life giving for me. We'd love to show you how to do that. And again, check out the links on our channels. But right now, we're going to end our service by praying. And then at the end of our service, we will post the details about uh, how to be involved through generosity, continuing our financial giving and continuing our volunteering. But right now I'm inviting you to pray. And for three minutes, a song is gonna come up on this, your screen. And I want you really to quieten your heart and to wait upon the Lord. The scripture instructs us to wait upon the Lord. That means that we lay down all of our fears, we, we, we bring them to Jesus, we allow Him to be King in our hearts, and we wait upon Him in silence. This is going to be such a beautiful life-giving time for you, and maybe you're only able to do it for three minutes, make it count in the presence of God. If you've never prayed before, you can simply say, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for my sin. And I ask you to come into my heart and be king. Sit on the throne of my heart. Let's wait on the Lord now for three minutes. Jesus.
God, we thank you that you reign supreme. You in every way are king. And in the midst of our present trial and darkness, we thank you that you are the light of the world, that you are the resurrection and the life. And you are well able to deliver us and our entire world because of the resurrection of Jesus. We put our hope and our trust in you. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to get down off the throne of our lives and to put you in your rightful place on the throne of our lives and on the throne of this world. You are King and we proclaim you as King today. Resurrection Sunday, in Jesus' name, Amen. Maybe you've just given your life to God for the first time. Please reach out to us and let us know that you did that. We want to help you with this journey. We're better together. Don't walk alone. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you, church. See you online.